competition, even if they thought it was a good idea. <laughs> oh my God. That is not a cigarette Zach Galifianakis pulled out on Real Time with Bill Maher. Well, I think we officially all know now where he stands on the great marijuana legalization debate. And Louis, you recently sat down with a lady who is all for it. Uh, her name is Cheryl Schumann, and she's a fascinating woman. It was a cancer diagnosis that led to her second career as a medical marijuana concierge, a $47 billion industry, by the way. Many have criticized her. They've called her a con artist, a snake oil salesman, a drug addict, but she shakes them all off. Tonight, the insider investigates the Beverly Hills Cannabis Queen. I love marijuana. I grow it. I smoke it. I vaporize it. I cook with it. I eat it raw. Whatever you call her, the queen of cannabis or the Martha Stewart of marijuana, one word defines Cheryl Schumann. Resilient. You have more lives than a cat. <laughs> and you keep getting back up. It's crazy. When I got into this, I, I was dying. I was $600,000 in debt. I'd lost almost all my hair. It was not pretty. The people wait, most of them. Cheryl was born into extreme poverty in a tobacco farming family in the Appalachian Mountains in Ohio. That's her in a CBS documentary from the 1960s. Those early roots seeded in her a relentless drive to succeed. But in 2006, after a successful business career, she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and given just months to live. I was rushed into emergency surgery and they did a radical hysterectomy, uh, removed ovaries, uterus, part of my colon, part of my bladder. And the cancer had spread. Yeah. But there was a blessing hidden yes. in that cancer. Yes. The blessing came in the form of a drug which in 1996 in California had been approved for medical use, marijuana. Cheryl used oil derived from the plant to alleviate her symptoms and made a remarkable recovery. You reach a point where you'll do almost anything to have one last day with the people that you love and care about. Cheryl began growing the plant and using her Hollywood connections, she started a Beverly Hills collective which caters to high society, literally. Her clients, A-list actors, agents, lawyers, and doctors. How did you conceive this? I mean, you're just recuperating from cancer and you, you thought of this spur of the moment? You know, to me, it was just obvious. It was just obvious because the luxury market, the affluent market hadn't been tapped yet. So I was like, let's start doing mansion parties and going back to the old speakeasy concept where we have great parties, DJs, chefs, they come in, it's great. It's couture cannabis. It is couture cannabis. And the couture cannabis business is booming. Cheryl has grown her collective to include over 1,700 private members, all holders of medical marijuana cards as required by California state law. Hi there, it's Cheryl. We're out at the greenhouse. Just wanted to share this with you. It's really beautiful, as you can see. But her ambitions are much grander than cannabis-themed parties. She's building an empire, buoyed by over $600 million in venture capital money. She's also the executive director of Moms for Marijuana and has become an outspoken advocate for legalization. This is the very first chance in our lifetimes that we can change the course of history and show by living example that the American dream is still possible. Call it the potcom boom, and one woman is planning to be front and center. But at the end of the day, you take a look at yourself and say, you know, what does my life really stand for? And when I see now that there's a good chance that I'm going to go down in history as the woman who led the overturn of a cannabis prohibition, that's what I'm proud of.